In this lesson, we are going to learn about interest. So what is interest? Suppose you have used some asset of other person, then in return, you have to pay him something, right? So interest, you can consider this as a reward. Paid by the borrower for the use of an asset belonging to the lender. Now there are two types of interest rate, simple interest and compound interest. What is simple interest? So simple interest means interest itself does not earn any interest. So interest itself does not earn interest. Whereas in compound, interest itself earns interest. Interest, okay? Now, if we have a formula for the simple interest, suppose you deposit amount C in the bank account for n years at the simple interest rate of I, then you'll get this amount. And similarly, if you deposit C amount in a bank account and after n years at the rate of I percent, sorry, this is 1 plus i to the power n so you'll get this amount under compound interest let's take one example let's say you have ten thousand in a bank account for three years at the rate of five percent you'll get eleven thousand five hundred and the same amount if invested in the compound interest you'll get 1 plus 3 times, sorry, this is okay. 0 0.05 to the power 3, you'll get 11,576.25. So you can notice the difference in the amount. This is because the interest earns interest. Okay. Now let's look at one example. Suppose an investor deposits 5,000 into a saving account that pays 10% simple interest per annum. So what is the accumulated amount after six years? So this is very simple. You simply multiply 5000 with 1 plus 6 times 0 0.1, which is 8000. Now let's make some changes in the investment. Let's say you invest this only for three years. So 5,000 times 1 plus 3 times 0 0.1, which is 6,500. And you again reinvest this amount by withdrawing. So this is 6,500 times 1 plus 3 times 0 0.1, which is 8,450. So you can notice the difference in the amount. So under a simple interest arrangement, an investor can earn more interest by withdrawing the capital and then immediately reinvesting it. So more interest upon reinvesting. Reinvesting. Now let's look at the same example in compound interest. So you invest 5000 at the rate of 10% for six years, you'll get 8,858. What if you invest this only for the three years? So you'll get 6,655. Now you again invest this amount for another three years, you'll get 8,858. So there is no changes in the accumulated amount at the end of six years. The accumulated value is the same with and without the reinvestment under compound interest. So, you know, in the, the problem in the simple interest is you have to go through unnecessary additional transactions for reinvestment, okay, which is not an easy job. That's why we need compound interest because in compound interest, interest itself earns interest, all right? 
Now let's look at one graph to visualize the growth of, of the investment under simple interest and compound interest. X-axis we have time in years and Y-axis we have accumulation of amount. Say so this is 0, 5, 10, 15, 20 and 25. In the beginning you invested 10,000 and then it gets, it starts accumulating 15,000. So this is 20,000, 25, 30 and then 35. The graph under simple interest will be straight line okay linear graph whereas the graph under compound interest will be exponential okay so like this so this is under compound interest and this is simple interest so the compound interest is exponentially shaped and under simple interest the graph is linear all right now let's understand the accumulation factors which is very important you know to accumulate the amount from one point to other point in time so suppose there are two points in time t1 t2 where t1 is less than t2 then we call a and inside the bracket t1 comma t2 is the accumulation factor accumulation factor from uh, for investment one dollar from time t1 to t2 okay we also use another notation a n but this is from the time zero to time n okay we do not write zero we simply write n but if there are different times we, we prefer to use this one now let's understand this from one example suppose an investor deposits 10,000 in a bank account that pays simple interest at the rate of 5% per annum now after three years the accumulated value of the deposit will be 11,500 so this is the accumulated amount all right accumulated amount now what is the accumulation factor in this three years so we write a03 or you can write a3 this is same so the accumulation factor is simply 11500 divided by 10000 so this is 1.15 now looking at this value, it feels like this is in the form 1 plus ni, right? And we have already seen this form in the formula of the simple interest here. So this is the accumulation factor. Okay. So we can write under simple interest, the accumulation factor is, we can use both of these notations is 1 plus ni and under compound interest the accumulation factor is you can guess 1 plus i to the power and this is the accumulation factor for compound interest now let's do one example of accumulation factor suppose you invest 1000 that accumulates to 2500 after five years so what is the accumulation factor so this is time zero and this is time five so we can write a zero comma five or simply a five okay so the accumulation factor is 2500 divided by 1000 which is 2.5 now um, let me ask one more question 
what is the simple annual interest rate that would give the accumulation factor this accumulation factor so what is the simple annual interest rate this is the question that would give this accumulation factor so we can write a 0 comma 5 and this is nothing but 1 plus 5 i right and you know this value which is 2.5 so from here you can calculate i equals to 30 percent now similarly you can do for the compound interest as well a 0 comma 5 and this is 1 plus i to the power 5 and you know this value 2.5 so i is 2.5 to the power 1 over 5 minus 1 which is 20.1 percent all right so this is how you can calculate the accumulation factor and we'll use this accumulation factor to to find out the accumulated value at the end of some years all right now let's look at the principle of consistency consistency so say there are three points in time t0 t1 and t2 t2 is greater than or equal to t1 t1 is greater than or equal to t0 and let's consider an investment of one dollar at t0 so what is the amount what is the accumulated amount at the end of t1 so this is nothing but accumulation factor t naught t1 right so this is the amount at the end of t1 now what is the amount at the end of t2 so we can simply multiply this from t1 to t2 so this is the amount at the end of t2 right now we can also do um, the investment from directly t0 to t2 so a from t0 to t2 okay so this is the amount for uh, at the end of t2 of one dollar all right now don't you think that this should be equal to this t0 t1 and a t1 t2 you're basically reinvesting and you uh, we have seen that under compound interest reinvestment you know does not impact the accumulated value at the end so this should be equal right and that is principle of consistency okay so principle of consistency states that in a consistent market these proceeds okay so these actions you know these proceeds should not depend on the course of action taken by the investor so we can write like this or we can extend this a t naught to t n a t naught t1 t1 t2 up to a t n minus 1 t n okay so this is the idea of principle of consistency now let's do one example so let's say you are given a 0 to 9 is 1.8 a 2 to 4 is 1.1 a 2 to 7 is 1.32 a 4 to 9 is 1.45 and you invested 4600 at time 0 and you'll get 8200 at time 10 now you are asked to calculate a 7 10 accumulation factor from time 7 to time 10 so this is the question now to visualize these values let me draw the number line i prefer to draw the number line so this is our number line say this is 0 2 4 7 9 and 10 
you invested 4600 at time 0 and you'll get 8200 at time 10 so you can say the accumulation factor would be a 0 to 10 or simply a 10 right and we can find out this accumulation factor by dividing 8200 uh, by 4600 okay and the accumulation factor from 2 to 4 is given 1.1 okay 4 to 9 is also given 1.45 and 0 to 9 is also given 0 to 9 which is 1.8 okay and you are also given 2 to 7 right so this is 2 to 7 1.32 and we are asked to calculate 7 to 10 this is the value we need to figure out so let's find out a 10 first so a 10 is nothing but 8200 divided by 4600 which is 1.7826 now using principle of consistency i'm writing this in short form principle of consistency you can say that a10 is a0 to 2 a2 to 7 and a7 to 10 right we can write like this so from here we can say a7 to 10 is now a10 we know 1.7826 divided by a0 to 2 now what is a2 to 7 2 to 7 is 1.32 right so this is 1.32 times what is um, 0 to 2 we don't know so i have written 0 to 2 okay now we need to figure out a 0 to 2 then we'll be able to get 7 to 10 so let's do one more principle of consistency so using principle of consistency we can say a 0 to 9 is a 0 to 2 times a 2 to 4 times a 4 to 9 right now a 0 to 2 becomes a 0 to 9 divided by a 2 to 4 a 4 to 9 now we know a 0 to 9 0 to 9 right this is 1.8 so this is 1.8 now 2 to 4 2 to 4 is 1.1 1 .1, 1 .1. 4 to 9 1.45 this is 1.45 okay and this comes out to be 1.1285 all right now we have obtained a 0 to 2 so we can say 1.7826 divided by 1.1285 times 1.32 and this is 1.1967 all right so this is how you can use principle of consistency to find out the accumulation factors all right now in the next video i'll talk about um, discounting factors present values and other interest rates other types of interest rate okay so for this video let's stop here and i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching